You're familiar with a company called Real Networks, are you not? Yes. Um, did uh, you ever have uh, any discussion with any representative of Real Networks uh, concerning um, what products uh, Real Networks should or should not uh, offer or distribute? Um, Microsoft signed two contracts with Real Networks. Um, is it not, sir? I have no idea. I thought it was one. Um, uh, Real Networks was previously called Progressive Networks, correct? Right. right. Um, uh, in the contract or contracts, if there was more than one, between Microsoft and Real Networks. Was there any restriction on what services Real Networks could provide to competitors of Microsoft? I've never looked at those contracts. Did you participate at all um, in those contracts, either the negotiation of those contracts or discussions concerning those contracts prior to the time they were in the I knew that Muglia and Moritz were talking with Progressive about some kind of deal, but I, I didn't know uh, what, what was in the deal. Did you know anything about what was in the deal? I knew there was an investment piece. I knew there was some code licensing uh, in it. That's about all. Um, I used to stay at work until uh, 11 or 12 and then go home and read. But I only let them schedule meetings on uh, Saturday generally where I go off and just read uh, people's PhD theses and new things that are going on in the field. Spend your time thinking intensely about a field you know, from a very young age, uh, which in my case is, uh, you know, I was 13 or 14 when I started to get involved. Uh, that's where you can do great things because your mind has really gotten into it. You, you understand it. As a percentage of my assets, you know, 99% of my assets are uh, the stock I own in Microsoft. I've got a house in the lake. I can uh, go water skiing. I can swim. I play tennis. Uh, got a beach place out of Hood Canal that I can take a seaplane out to time to time. Somebody else? I never have. Can you see it? I'm used to, to having a company where um, the ideas that I have are, are something that I can easily pursue. So I think it'd be a, a tough transition. Would this uh, computer revolution have uh, passed you by? Perhaps. Things move very quickly in the industry and it was really the urgency to get out there and be the first one to, to put a, a basic on the microcomputer that caused me to drop it. Yes. Part of your genius is that you are a computer whiz. And the other is that you did have the, 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 the business acumen to, to turn it into a working company. Uh, is, are you a business genius too? Well, I wouldn't say genius. Um, I enjoy working with the people, talking about what we're going to get done, getting real excited, making sure that the structure is there, that the ideas get, get measured properly, and, and really leading the company. That's exciting. At the age of 28, in a, a field of work world, burnout is common. Are you going to burn out before you're 30? No. How do you know? Well, the work we're doing is, it's not like, you know, we're doing the same thing all day long. Uh, we go into our offices and think up new programs. We get together in meetings. We go out and see end users. We talk to customers. There's so much variety, and, and there's always new things going on. Um, and I don't think there'll ever come a time when that, that would be boring. And, uh, trying to, to make those two things uh, go together. Uh, that's part of the challenge of my job. Uh, and I do see a lot of our companies coming from smaller companies that don't have that same same channel, the uh, small business units, and that's uh, in total only a, a couple hundred people who control every aspect of a product. So Microsoft Excel, our spreadsheet, uh, there's a group of 200 people who wake up every day thinking, you know, we want to 
get this new version out. We want to increase our market share, and uh, so they're, you know, keeping ahead of, of Lotus when they do that. Uh, and we're processing. There's a group the same size that wakes up every day and says, you know, here's how we're going to uh, get even further ahead of, of Word Perfect. So that kind of structure uh, is part of it. Also, a, a great thing for us is the way we use computers in our own company to keep open communication. Uh, this electronic mail where you can sit down at your desk and type in a message and send it to lots of people all at once. And then when they come to their machine, they, they see that message. It allows us on a worldwide basis uh, to keep things coordinated. I send hundreds of messages a day so I can touch you know, a variety of products and, and lots and lots of people can know what I'm thinking uh, without you know, endless meetings as part of that. The approach we take is there's only uh, two people who oversee all these business units, myself and one other person. And so uh, the business units charge off and do what they want to do unless the two of us see something where we insist on some cooperation or, or sharing between them. And so it's a very efficient process. People present their plans to the two of us. Uh, you know, we say, okay, that's fine, go ahead. That's it. But it's quite unusual in a company the size you've now become to still have the control vested in two and albeit one more powerful than the other individuals? Well, control, I, this word control is a dangerous word. I, I am the chief executive officer of the company, so I, you know, I have responsibility for our overall strategy. But, you know, I'm, I'm traveling, I'm focused on future technology, and so it, the health of the company depends on my having hired very, very smart people. And everybody has very big jobs. Believe me, this is not a company where people sit around worried about control. They've got a lot of challenge, um, a lot of room to do new things. And they're just seeing if they can uh, live up to that.